I'm glad to, I'm glad you guys are excited. I am too. We start up a brand new series this week, and I thought about this. We had just got done spending four weeks talking about, you know, sports and athletics, and then now Tony kicks off with football. So, I mean, if you don't like sports, then, well, it's not going to be all about that. But we just this fall time of year, and everybody's in the air. And I just want to ask, how many of you have already went crazy over pumpkin spice and pumpkins decorating your house? All right, it's like four people. It's still summertime, guys. Uh, Sweatshirts, people still getting sunburned. I mean, I just don't understand. But we get so excited about this time of year. And I guess with it, we like, you know, football and we like sports. And now, along goes with that, everybody starts getting sick, including me. I've already had a trip to urgent care with one of our girls and still don't feel the best. And it's just been interesting. And this is the time of year and what falls. And this is, just, this is kind of just what happens. And today is a, a great day because we start this brand new series about things we need to know. And we're going to go over these next four weeks. We're going to talk about four truths that every person needs to know. Because whenever you look at your Bible, you're probably like me. You open it up, you're like, okay, where do I start? Like, okay, I'm going to start a new year. I'm going to read my Bible every day. I'm going to, I'm going to read my Bible. But I open it up and there's no pictures. Isn't that the first thing you look for is Pictures. To help tell you the story. That's why I like my girls' Bibles so much. Because it has pictures in it. It's like, okay, I, I'm going to read my Bible. But then I open it up and it's like, man, those words are so tiny. And next thing you know, we just close our Bibles. We put them away. You're like, you know, I'm not going to worry about it. Or, ah, we'll do it later. And the next thing we know, we haven't read it at all. And there's so many things that we don't understand. And I think that the reason we don't understand is because we don't try to understand and it gets, it gets hard. For example, uh, this past week, me and my wife, we celebrated our 15-year anniversary. She, she's awesome. She's been with me for 15 years. It was awesome. But there was a lot of things about marriage that I didn't know whenever I said I do. Because somebody's got to cook. You don't just get to eat. Somebody's got to buy the food before you can cook. And then after you cook, you got to what? You got to... Clean the dishes, and you're like, well, who's going to do that? You know, mom ain't there no more. So there's a lot of things that we don't know, and we have to kind of learn kind of as we go. That's the whole reason why kids, that's why you go to school, so you can learn your colors, and four plus four, and these hydraulic quadrilupin equations. That's a word. So we can learn these things. And that's why we get into these books, and that's why we have to learn all these things. And then the thing of it is that when it comes to a Bible, and I don't know what your Bible looks like. Mine looks like an Apple iPad. So whatever your Bible looks like, and it's got a bunch of pages and the really thin tissue pages. And as you dive into it, you're like, man, I don't, know, I don't know where to start. And so what we often do is we all often play the dumb card. Well, if I don't get in there, I can just use the I don't know. Billy Graham was asked this question in an interview, and this is one of my favorite quotes of Billy Graham. He was asking an interview, and they said, Mr. Billy Graham, you're one of the greatest ministers this world has ever seen. And they asked him, he said, Mr. Graham, are you not afraid of what you don't know about the Bible? And he went, absolutely not. And the interviewer, she was like, can you, can you explain, please? And he says, that doesn't scare me at all, what I don't know. What does scare me is what I do know and I don't live by. So we have this vast knowledge of stuff that we need to know that we don't know. But yet, what are we doing to fill it up? And so we often play the dumb card. Oh, I don't know, or I don't need to know, or, or who cares? And so we just don't know. But if we could understand these truths about the Bible and about God, it will lay down the foundation for everything in our lives. Because there's a lot of things that we hear that are not necessarily True. There's a lot of things that we hear and we say, oh, that was God. God, God did that. It, it's in the Bible. But now as you start looking to the Bible, you're like, oh, no, it's not. And so as you dive into the Bible, you get to see all these amazing truths. And we like to use the, the I don't know card, use it as a plan, you know, to play dumb. Like, well, I'm not going to go to a Bible study because I'm afraid that there's things that I won't know and I don't want to look like a fool. Or I'm not going to talk to that person about church because they might ask me a question that I don't know. And so we just don't do anything. And guys, it's not, that's not an excuse not to do anything. We've got to do something. 
And so what we're going to do over the next four weeks, we're just going to dive into it, and we're just going to go over some basic truths that every person needs to know. And I think this is going to be the, one of the most impactful teaching that you've ever heard because it greatly impacted my life. And so we're going to be in several different places in the Bible. So if you have your phone or notes, I encourage you to take notes. But this is going to be four amazing truths. And we're going to start in Deuteronomy. This is in the Old Testament. And we're going to discover some things that you may or may not know. Or maybe you thought you knew, but then we're going to reconfirm it. Deuteronomy, and I, I love this. So if you look in your Bibles, it's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. In the Old Testament. And this is Deuteronomy 32. And this is the amazing truth that we need to know. And in this, this is what Moses tells us. He said, now look now, I myself am he. This is God speaking now. He said, look now, I myself am he. There is no other God but me. I am the one who kills and gives life. I am the one who wounds and heals. No one can be rescued from my powerful hand. This is a powerful statement. And God is declaring that he alone is God. He said, I myself am he. I am it. There is no one else. There's no other God but me. There is but one God. There is one God. We often refer to him as the God, the only true and living God. There is no other God. And God is declaring this. And he puts his stamp on this by saying, look, I'm the one who kills and gives life. I'm the one who wounds and heals. No one can be rescued from my powerful hand. He's it. He is the giver, the taker of life. Everything that happens in this world is right here in the palm of his hand. Now, he's got a great big old hand. Don't you remember being little and you put your parents' hand, you know, you try to put your parents' hand to that. And I remember when my mind became as big or bigger than my dad's and I was like, yes, I'm a man. I just thought it was so awesome. And God's hand is so much bigger than that. He says, listen, I, I hold everything right here. Kids, there's nothing greater than God. He's it. And he gave us the life. He gave us the air. He gave us the ability to get up this morning. That last breath you took, that just wink that you did with your eyes, that's all because of God. He has it all. There is but one God. So what truth do we need to know? Because the world tries to tell us that there's so many other gods, but there is only one God. And his name is God. And he is our God. He goes on to declare this, and this is what Samuel had to say about it. This is 2 Samuel chapter 7. So Samuel was a minister of God. He was a priest, and he, not a priest, he was a prophet of God. And he declared God's greatness. This is 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 22. He says, how great you are. I love this. How great you are, O sovereign Lord. There is none like you. We have never heard of another God like you. Now, get this. You know the reason why they've never heard of another God? Because there is no other God. Period. That's it. The reason why we don't hear these other gods around is because there ain't none. Now, you, in Greek mythology and all, you may hear about Zeus and all these other gods. But guess what they did? They made all this stuff up. There, there's no evidence. There's no proof. There, there's none of that. But yet we've got years upon years upon years of evidence that there is only one God and His name is God. And now Samuel's declaring, God, you are it. There is none like you. There is none like you. For there is no other. I love that. There's no other. That's it. You don't, get, you don't get your wife confused with somebody else, do you? you? You don't get your own kids confused with somebody else. Like, wow, who's this? No. If you go take somebody else's kid from Walmart, you're going to jail. I mean, you just don't do that. You, you know this. You know this. And that's what he's saying here. There is none like you. None like you. Look at 1 Kings 8.60. I told you it's going to be quite a few scriptures, and normally I don't do this. It's very simple, but I want you to understand that there is only one God. And in 1 Kings 8, 60, I love this. It says, Then people all over the earth will know that the Lord alone is God, and there is no other. The Lord alone is God. The Lord alone. There is no other. Now, we often start letting our minds wander and thinking, well, who created God? And if somebody, if God was there, then there's got to be another God out there somewhere. He says, no, there is no other. This is it. There is only one God. This is all. One God. 
And this is the truth that we have to have nailed down in our lives. That we need to have it nailed down that there is only one God. Because if we start questioning this, then we're going to start questioning everything else. And we can't, we can't do that. We've got to have this nailed down. There is only one God. And the goal is, is that people all over the earth will know that there is only one God. There is no other. But yet our society tells us that there are so many other gods. That's exactly the lie that Satan told Eve in the garden. Ah, oh, you, then you're going to be a god just like him. No, there is no other God. There is only one God. One God. Look at Isaiah 46. He says, here's the proof. You want proof that I'm the only God? Here's the proof. Because a lot of times we like to show me. Like, we don't believe things until you show me. Show me. Your kids come in, they say, I can jump up and touch, you know, the basketball go, okay? Prove it. Show me. We want, we, want, we want proof. Well, here's a proof. This is Isaiah 46, verse 9. He says, remember these things. Remember the things I have done in the past, for I alone am God. I am God, and there is none like me. Look at the evidence. What evidence do you have to suggest? What evidence do you have to say that there is another God? And as you look, you will find none. There is no other God. And look at all the past. And you can look at just from this point, from Genesis to Deuteronomy and all the evidence of God. Because you see his creation. See how he's delivered Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see how he's already parted the seas with Moses, how he delivered these people out of Egypt. We see so much hands of God. What's the greatest thing about God is, is that in the very beginning, when God spoke to dirt, he made something out of it. And he said, look at the evidence. There is no evidence to support that there is another God. There is only one God. And his name is God. I know I keep repeating myself. I hope you'll get it. And all this right here we've been talking about is just in the Old Testament. And I, I'm telling you, there's hundreds. There's, there's, there's tons of them in the Old Testament. About God declaring that there is only one God. And he is that God. There's tons of them. If you go into the New Testament, you support it there too. John 17, 3. I love this. This is John saying this. And he says, And this is the way to have eternal life, to know the only true God and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. The only way we can know God is through Jesus, and he is the only God. There, there is no other God. And the reason why this is so important is because people tell us that there is more. And then they try to introduce aliens and all this other stuff. They're like, whoa, wait a minute now. Then they're going to throw in evolution on there. They're like, wait a minute. What, a, what does the Bible say about God? And he says there is one God and there is no other. There is but one God. And his name is God. This is it. Right, 1 Timothy 2.5 it says, for there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. Again, there is one God. And you might be here thinking, well, I already know there's a God. I don't know why you keep saying this. Yes, I understand. There is a God. There is one God, and his name is God. I get that. But do you have a relationship with this God? Look at this verse, this last verse on this subject, okay? James 2, 19. He says, you say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. Now, this is awesome. Because it's not just enough to know that there is one God. That's great. And I like that what James said. You, you already know there's one God? Then good for you. Give yourself a pat on the back. Because even the demons know, and they tremble. See, it's one thing just to know God. But it's another thing to know God. We know all kinds of people. We, we know all, all sorts of people along the walks of life. But do we actually know them? We get famous people or rich people or somebody else. It doesn't matter. Do we know them or do we not know them? I know that we're kind of torn here. We have you know, Virginia Tech and some UT. And some people say, yeah, I, I, I know who Peyton Manning is. You know, I, I know him. Okay, do you, do, you know, do you have his cell phone number? Can you text up the guy and say, happy birthday? Probably not. And they'll say, yeah, I know, I know Michael Vick. I know, I know who he is. And yeah, he had all that 
dog stuff and all, but yeah, I know him. But do, do you really know him? Can you text him up? Can you just stroll up to his house without somebody coming out there and running you off? No. And that's what he's saying here about God. It's one thing to know God, but it's another thing to know him personally. We have to have that relationship with him. So what do we have to have nailed down? That there is but one God. We have to have that nailed down. Completely and totally nailed down in our lives. And see, once we get the fact that there is one God, we get that nailed down, then we got something that we can build off of. There is one God. If you go back to Genesis, and if you have your Bibles, I want everybody to turn here because this is one of my favorite passages in all the Scripture. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Because now that there is one God, we, we understand that there is one God, and then we can start building things off of that. There is but one God, and I like this. Genesis 1. I'm going to read this whole verse, but there's four words that's what's so important. It says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I love this. In the beginning, God. This is it. What we need to know and understand is all summed down into four words. In the beginning, God. I wasn't there at the beginning. I had no input on what color grass should be or what the sky would look like. All I know is that God had a blank canvas and he made it all. So there is one God and he created everything in it. He created everything. It all. And we get to enjoy all the things that God has created in the beginning God. There is one God and he created everything. But our culture now is trying to tell us, no, that that's not true. That it all happened with the Big Bang and evolution and all of that. That you are descended from some sort of great ape or something like that. But the, is that true? See, all that theory is based upon, it's all just based upon a theory, a guess. There's no, there's no support for that. But we have complete and total support over the creation, that God, in the beginning, God, He created all the heavens, He created all the earth, He created the land and the sea. And like, oh, you know what? I'm God. So, I'm going to pop a tree right here. And I'm going to pop a tree right here. God just went all Bob Ross on everybody. And He was just a little tree here and a happy tree over here. And See, these kids don't know who Bob Ross is. <laughs> Get on Netflix. I just want a tree here and here. So he's put, you know, Bob Ross says, a little happy little tree here. Happy little tree here. A friend of mine, he said, every day before football practice, the whole football team was watching PBS and watching Bob Ross paint. We just thought it was cool, like how he could do that. He would just take a blank canvas and Bob Ross could make mountains and a creek and happy little trees everywhere. And that's exactly what God did. In the beginning, God created everything. Everything. And then we know that he created you and me. And we are descendants of Adam and Eve. Not a, not a, some sort of species. Not about a big bang where rocks collided. God was the big bang when he said, let there be light. And there was light. God did that. When he divided the waters and created the land. Like, I want some grass here. That'd be a great place for Russia right there. United States, boom, right there. We're going to put a tree here, some palm trees over there, some coconuts, Yeah. You want some animals? All right, we need some apes over here. We need some, you know, cows here. We need some horses. There's some sheep and goats and just boom, boom, boom. There it is. God created it all. He created it all. In the beginning, God. See, church, if you had this nailed down, that God created everything, then it doesn't matter what anybody else says. God created it. Who can dispute it? Job had this conversation with God. And look at what, look at what Job and God had to say. Here's what God's response to Job is. This is Job 37. God said, pay attention to this, Job. Stop and consider the wonderful miracles of God. Do you know how God controls the storm and causes light in the flash uh, from his clouds? Do you understand how he moves the clouds with wonderful perfection and skill? Church, we can look all through creation. We can see this beautiful creation that God has made, and it is beautiful. Here we are, we're coming upon fall, and you're getting ready to see all the leaves and things. Just It's like a... A perfect display of God's greatness. And yet people are wondering why we're here. God created us. There is but one God and he created everything. Everything in it is all God's. He created it all. He created it all. 
Psalm 95. Psalm 95 says this. says, He holds his hands in the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. The sea belongs to him for he made it. His hands formed the dry land too. I love this. His hands created it. I have four girls and they, they're all the time making something. I've got this box. It started out like this and now it's huge. And they're all the time making me something. And sometimes I, I know what it is and other times I have no idea what it is. They're having to tell me and they're coloring sheets and all, I mean, all their creations that's right there. And they created it. And there's something they put on it always. And they always sign their name on it. Like this, this is their creation. And that's every time that we look outside, we should see God's stamp on it. Because how beautiful it really is. He created it all. And even the seas and the land, he created that too. There's not a single thing created on earth that God did not create. There is but one God and he created it all. He created everything. And all this again is in the Old Testament. It's in the New Testament too. This is John 1, 3. <laughs> He says, God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. He created it all. So we kind of talked about two subjects in the Old and New Testament. There is one God, and he created everything in, in both Old and the New Testament. And the Old Testament and the New Testament both speak to us today to let us know that there is but one God, and he created everything. But still yet, we don't have that nailed down in our lives. Because we start wondering and questioning because I wasn't there when God created that. We start examining like, well, I don't know how God can speak to dirt and make a man. And here's the base of the way that it is. So, I'm going to go, not Bob Ross, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a masterpiece before you. Some of you are already laughing because you know my drawing skills. There's the king of the house, and if you don't know those, those are muscles. Just so, just so, just so you know. There's my wife. Well, it's going to take me a minute. I got four girls. There's my creation. I created this. Now, how do you know that I created this? Because you witnessed this. You, you witnessed me take a Expo dry erase marker and draw this out. And I created this. And we can make this as beautiful as we want to and the sun and we can put even a little that's supposed to be a dog by the way <laughs> his name's Fido and you know we can even put you know mountains back here in the back and you know all this this is my this is my creation I, I created this and what the Bible is telling us is that you was not present when God created everything. When he created the stars, the sun, the moon, the sky, all the grass. You wasn't there when he, created, when he created man. And at the end of every creation that's painted down here, everybody always puts, you know, their name. And bam, sign it. And this is how we know who's whose creation this is, is because of who signed it. Now, there are a few paintings across the world that have never been signed, and nobody knows who created those. And what society tries to get us to believe is that, oh, because you wasn't present at creation, you don't know 100% that God created this. But, oh, we do, because the Bible tells me so. That once we dive into God's Word, we can find out that God created everything through Him and that nothing was created except through Him. God created everything. This is my creation. 
all that you see is God's creation. How great is our God? Church, He's awesome. He's all-powerful. He's almighty. And He created everything in it. We learned this from the very beginning. And now, we start wondering. We start wondering if God really done it. We start wondering if there's something else out there. Sometimes we wonder what it would be like just to forget about God, knowing God. Do you believe that God created everything? Do you, do you believe that with all your heart? Because we need to have that nailed down. I think sometimes we take it for granted. We've heard it so much, and we, we've opened up Bibles, and we've heard it so much, the, the seven days of creation. You know, God created everything in six days, and on the seventh day that He rests, that we've almost grown numb to it. Sometimes we wonder, and we're just sitting, God, where do I fit in all of this? What, what, what is my purpose on this? You created me. What, what is my purpose? And we start questioning. We start wondering all this. And what Satan will try to do, he'll try to isolate us and say, listen, nobody cares about you. You just need to go ahead and just give up. But church, if God created you, he's created you for a purpose. Do you believe that God created everything? Church, we've got to have this nailed down. That there is but one God and He created everything. If we don't have that nailed down, then nothing else is going to make any sense. We've got to have that nailed down. We need to be able to watch the news through our God filter and say, okay, as, as I'm listening to this news and as I'm reading the Bible, as, as I'm going to school, does this fit into God's plan? Because there's things out there that try to teach us otherwise. There is but one God, and He created everything. So let me try to give me a warning whenever our first child was born. And if you've ever been there when your child has been born, it's one of the most amazing sights that I've ever seen. We ended up having to have an emergency C-section with our oldest one. And I was in there in the, that operating room, and hearing that first cry... And then wipe off all the stuff and everything off. And then, and then I got to carry this little six-pound girl down to the kid's wing thing. And so I was just walking through there. And I mean, just tears were just rolling. It's like, I don't know why I was crying. I just couldn't quit crying. And I mean, man, ten grown men couldn't have knocked me down. It was just an amazing, powerful feeling. And the whole time through there, I was like, wow. Wasn't this how God feels every time? Every time. There's times I look at my wife and we're looking at our girls and our house would be a mess and they're playing and doing cartwheels and jumping jacks. And I'll put my arm around her and I go, we created this mess. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> All this in that's in the world, and sometimes it looks like a mess. Listen, I created this, but God created everything else. And we need to know and understand that God is not most concerned about the presidential election. He's got it figured out. He's under control. Remember, he's got it all in his hand. God's not worried about drugs, sex, and violence. He's got it all in the palm of his hand. What is our role and our responsibility? Is to let the world know. That there is one God. He created everything. Look at this. This is Romans. Romans chapter 1 verse 20. It's going to be one of my last scriptures I promise. Romans 1 20. He says. For ever since the world was created. People have seen the earth and the sky. Through everything God made. They can clearly see his invisible qualities. His eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. And here's what he's saying. Like I did this down here and you saw my signature. You saw my signature here, and that, this is my name right here, if you can't read it. That's, that's my name. And what he's saying is that all of creation, the sunset, the beauty, the skies, all the creation, that is God's signature. And that is what people need to see. And it is our job and responsibility to point people to God. Not somebody else, but to God. For there is one God, and His name is God, and He created everything. And we can trust Him. 
You could trust Him through your most deepest, darkest times. You could trust Him through your marriage. You could trust Him through all your relationships. You can trust Him as you go through school. You can trust Him when you're down in the deepest, darkest valley. Why? Because He created it all. And you're in His creation too. God created you. And if He created you, He's got a purpose for you. And our first purpose is to declare that there is only but one God. And He created everything. No matter what anybody else says, no matter what any other magazine says or any other book tells us, no matter what TV news or movies, no matter what culture tries to tell us, there is but one God. And He created everything. My question to you is, do you have that nailed down? Do you know that there is only one God? Or sometimes you let your mind wander and thinking, ah, there's got to be somebody else out there. You know, who, who's greater than God? I want to know that guy. But there's no evidence to suggest any of that. What we do have, we have God's Word. And His Word has been proven time and time and time again that there is one God. And He created everything. And if He created everything, I think He's got it. This is my creation. You might think, well, I don't believe God created, I don't believe God created everything. Really? Here's my last example. So you have no idea what I'm drawing back here. Just like we wasn't there during the creation. We wasn't there to see all that God created. So I drew something else back here. So there's my little man that says uplift rocks. Yay. Well. <laughs> now, there's no signature. And you didn't see me draw it. Who drew it? Now you can sit here and you can question, you can argue, you can do all points. Here's what the fact of the matter is. We have God's word to tell us who created everything. Are you going to believe it? Or are you going to not? This is what my Bible looks like. And I believe God's word. Do you believe your Bible? Do you believe that there is but one God and that he created everything? Because some of you, you, you do. You have that nailed down. You know that there is one God, but you've not been living like there's, been, there's just one God. You don't have a relationship with him. Like You, you may have confessed him when you, whenever you were little, but you don't have an active relationship with him. Your relationship with him is almost non-existent or even dead. Others of you, man, you are on fire. You're a fireball and you're telling everybody, man, you've got to come and check out my church. You need to know God. Are you saved? Are you going to heaven? Do, do you know God? I mean, you're just out there and you're just hitting it and you need to keep hitting it and keep hitting it. Others of you, you're kind of questioning things. You're like, I'm just not sure where I fit into this picture. And can I say, listen, right here, you've got all, these, you've got all this evidence. It's right here, right before you. It says through everything God has made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities. There is a God right now that created everything and he wants a relationship with you. The question is, do you have a relationship with him? This is something that nobody else can answer. Kids, it's something that you can't, your parents can't answer for you. This is something that you have to answer for yourself. Do you have a relationship with God? The God, the one and only true God. Our God. Some of you say, yes, I have a most definite relationship. Others of you, you're not so sure. Do you have a relationship with God? I don't know your situation. I don't know how you grew up. I don't know maybe the way that you was trained or maybe that you were taught in, in the Bible, God's Word, His creation. But today there's this one truth that I want you to leave here with today. And this one truth, this one truth is what all the foundation of all the Bible, everything else hangs on to. And that is that there is but one God and He created everything. Do you believe in the one true God?
I want to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes just for a moment as we pray together. Father God, I pray right now that you would speak so clearly and so boldly that we would hear directly from you. Holy Spirit, search us out and speak to us right now. As you pray right now, there's some of you here today that you, you need to nail this down, that you've questioned, you've doubted whether or not there was one God and where you fit in this plan. You've doubted. He created you and He's got a purpose for you. What is God telling you right now? God's speaking to you right now. So listen, it's time to nail this down, bud. You've been wondering for way too long. You need to nail this down. There is but one God. I am it and you need to worship me. And he's calling out your name. He's saying now's the time. There is but one God. And he created everything. Can you declare it this morning? If you're here today and you're like, man, I need to nail this down. That there is one God. I've been wondering and wondering and wondering. I need to nail this down. Nail this down. There is but one God. And he is calling out your name. He wants a relationship with you and He wants you to nail this down where your faith will not waver in any way. But that it will be nailed down 100% that there is but one God. And His name is God. And He created everything. If that's you today, would you call on God right now and say, God, I believe in the one true God. I believe. And I pray right now, God, that you will hear my prayer as I call out to you. For you're the only God to hear my voice. God, will you take my life and make me brand new? God, will you forgive me of all my faults and all my failures? God, will you forgive me of the times that I've neglected to serve you? God, will you take all my sins, all my shame? I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior for my sins. Thank you for new life. Now you have mine. Nobody's looking around. If you prayed up prior today to receive Jesus as your Savior, recognize God as the one true God. May I pray for you? If you prayed that prayer today, may I pray for you? Would you just slip your hand and say, I prayed that prayer today to receive Jesus as my Savior. God sees your hands. Thank you, God. Father God, how awesome and powerful you are. And I pray that you to bless those, Father, that have made things new with you today. There's those of you here today, and maybe you've been questioning this, that you've not needed this nailed down, Maybe your relationship with God is not where it needs to be. And as I listen, I'm the only true God. You've been trying to live for everything else. And now I want you to live for me. I want you to live for me. May I pray for you? If that's you today, that, man, you're just not where you need to be with God. And he's calling you out. And he's wanting you to just to worship him and to serve him. May I pray for you? If that's you today, would you just slip your hand up and say, that's me. Hands are going up. Hands are still going up. You're just not where you need to be with God. Hands are still going up. May I pray for you? Father God, I pray that you bless those. God, that you are speaking to today, that their relationship with you, God, will be on fire. God, that you would speak so loud and boldly. That God, you speak so clearly that they would know exactly what you'd have them to do. And God, that they would follow you to the ends of the earth. God, you spoke in your word to us today that there is but one God. His name is God, and you are it. God, this creation that we get to enjoy, it's your creation. Thank you, God, so much for allowing us the opportunity to live and breathe and function, have families and work in your creation. Thank you, God, for giving us so much of the beauty, God, that we often take for granted for. God, thank you so much for counting us worthy that you would send your son to die for us. God, may you live and breathe in through everything that we say and do. And I pray, God, that together we we'll give you our very best and hold nothing back. God, speak to your people and lead us and guide us that we may be able to honor you and your creation. For you are the only God. And your name is God. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you give God some